JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 24th until May the 28th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or, invest or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a light week ahead of us in terms of uh, scheduled economic releases and events, but we do get a couple of important ones. First of all, we have an RBNZ monetary policy decision on Wednesday. We are following the latest um, better than expected employment data from New Zealand. It would be interesting, uh, it would be interesting to see whether officials will sound a bit more optimistic. In the US, we will get to hear from several Fed speakers, while on Friday, the Fed's favorite inflation metric, the core PC index, is due to be released. Both are likely to set the tone as to whether the Fed is indeed considering to start uh, normalizing uh, policy sooner than previously anticipated. Now, let's take things uh, from the beginning. On, uh, on Monday, uh, uh, Monday appears to be a relatively light day in terms of economic data and releases. Stock markets in Germany, Switzerland, and Norway will be will stay closed in celebration of the Pentecost, while uh, Canada will be on holiday as well due to the Victoria Day. We believe that in the absence of any important data, market uh, attention may fall on comments and remarks by Fed officials. Today, we will uh, get to hear from Atlanta Fed President uh, Rafael Bostig and Fed uh, Board Governor uh, Leil Brainard. Following, uh, following the search in both the headline and core inflation rates in the US, as well as the taper talk uh, revealed in the minutes of the latest FOMC gathering, it would be interesting to see what they have to say. Maybe those two members were initially in the camp supporting that it is too early to start discussing policy normalization, but after the surge in inflation, especially the underlying forces, they may have changed their mind. Let's not forget that just after the CPI data were out, Bostic noted that it's too soon to judge whether the inflation trend is worrisome, avoiding to say confidently that the surge is due to transitory factors. If we do indeed get more Excuse me, if we do indeed get more skeptical views on the inflation and taper front, equities may pull back again, while the US dollar could rebound. On the other hand, anything suggesting that uh, they still see the inflation spike as temporary and that uh, we still have a long way to go before the committee starts uh, normalizing uh, policy, uh, this could have the opposite effect, namely equities are likely to march north and the US dollar, as well as other safe havens, may slide. Um, now on Tuesday, during the Asian morning, we get the bag of uh, Japan's core CPI for April, but as it is always the case, no forecast is available. Later in the day, we get uh, Germany's final uh, GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to confirm its preliminary estimate of a 1.7% quarter over quarter contraction. We also get the nation's Z ZEW survey for, um, uh, for May. The current assessment index is uh, forecast to have risen to 95.5 from 94.1, while the business expectations one is anticipated to have inched up to 101 from 99.5. This is likely to take the business climate index up to 98.1 from 96.8, 
thereby confirming that the Eurozone's growth engine continues to recover from its coronavirus-related damages at a decent pace. European shares in the Euro may climb higher, but we doubt that this could raise speculation that the ECB will start uh, withdrawing monetary policy anytime soon. After all, last Tuesday, President Lagarde confirmed that, confirmed that clearly, saying that it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon. Now, on Wednesday, the highlight on the agenda may be the RBNZ uh, decision, decision scheduled uh, during the Asian trading. At its latest gathering, this bank kept policy settings, uh, its policy settings uh, untouched, with policymakers maintaining the position that uh, they are ready, they are prepared to lower the official cash rate further if required, and adding that the prolonged period of time is most likely to pass until their objectives are met. Since then, New Zealand CPI ticked up to 1.5% year over year from 1.4%, but although this is a move in the desired direction, it is still below the midpoint of the of the bank's 1% to 3% to range. However, the employment report for the first quarter came in better than expected, which may have lessened the likelihood for further interest rate reductions. Thus, even if policymakers keep the door open for such an action, we believe that they may sound a bit more, a bit more optimistic than previously, giving the impression that this is not something that will happen in the months to come if the economy continues to improve. So a more optimistic language may help the Kiwi recover some of its uh, recently lost ground. On Thursday, the only item worth mentioning uh, the only items worth mentioning are uh, the second estimate of the US GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to reveal a small upside revision to 6.5% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate from 6.4%, as well as the, the durable goods orders for April. Both headline and core rates uh, are expected to have uh, slow to 0.7 and 1% from 2. Point, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, both headline and core sales are expected to have slowed to 0.7% month over month from 1% and 2.3% respectively. And finally, on Friday, Asian time, the Tokyo CPIs for May are due to be released along uh, Japan's employment, re employment report for April. No forecasts are available for the, headline, for the headline rate, while the core one is anticipated to have stayed unchanged at minus 0.2% year over year. The employment rate is expected to have ticked up to 2.7% from 2.6%, while the jobs to applications ratio is forecast to have hit steady at 1.10. At 1.10. Later in the day, we get the U.S. personal income and spending data for April, alongside uh, the year-over-year -year core PCE rate for the month. Personal income is expected to have declined 14.8% month-over-month after surging 21.1% in March while spending is forecast to have slowed to 0.5% month over month from 4.2%. The year-over-year -year core PC rate, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric, is anticipated to have surged to 3% uh, from 1.8%, adding to fears that the late spike in inflation may not be due to transitory factors. This may increase speculation that the Fed will need to start considering policy normalization sooner than previously thought and may have a negative impact on equities and other risk-linked assets. At the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens may, may strengthen. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So, bye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.